When you have finished your cleaning task, it's time to empty and rinse the system. This step is very important and should be performed after every use. Doing so ensures that your system is ready for use anytime you need it and will help reduce strong odors that may develop in any system that is not properly maintained. To begin, wheel the system to a floor sink and locate the dump hose on the side of the vacuum tank. Now, disconnect the dump hose from the vacuum tank and keep the hose pointed in an upright direction to avoid spills. Then, quickly lower the dump hose into the sink, allowing the contents of the vacuum tank to drain out. When the vacuum tank is empty, lift the dump hose out of the floor sink and reattach it to the dump hose cap attached to the vacuum tank. Now, disconnect the vacuum hose from the cuff on the side of the vacuum tank. Turn on the vacuum motor and use the vacuum hose to remove any cleaning solution from the trolley bucket. This process accomplishes two things. First, it reduces cleaning solution and soils from the trolley bucket. Second, it will rinse the inside of the vacuum hose, helping to prevent odors. If necessary, use a hose to rinse the inside of the trolley bucket to loosen sediment that may have settled to the bottom of the bucket. Then, continue to vacuum the trolley bucket until it is clean and empty. When all of the cleaning solution has been removed from the trolley bucket, turn the vacuum motor off. Now, return to the dump hose and empty the vacuum tank using the same procedure as previously described. When the vacuum tank is empty, leave the dump hose in the floor sink and remove the vacuum motor by unfastening the claps on the side of the tank. Place the vacuum motor on the handle as we continue. Next, remove the filter bag from the vacuum tank. Empty the contents of the filter bag into the trash can by turning it inside out and removing all large debris. Then, grab a hose and rinse the filter bag until it is free of debris. When it is clean, turn the bag right side out and place it back into the vacuum tank. Now, use a hose to rinse the float cage. This step is very important should be performed after each use. A clogged or dirty float screen can negatively impact the performance of the vacuum. Once the float cage has been rinsed, set the vacuum motor back on the system's handle while we rinse the inside of the vacuum tank. Next, use the hose to thoroughly rinse the inside of the vacuum tank, allowing the water to empty out through the dump hose. Be sure to rinse the underside of the tank by placing the hose up and under the lip on the top of the tank. This is a common collection point for odor-causing soils. Once the tank has been rinsed and is free of debris, place the vacuum motor on the top of the tank at an angle to allow the tank to air dry. Next, remove the squeegee head and spreader pad from the AutoVac hitch. Grab the rear of the trolley bucket for added stability and pull firmly on the squeegee head to release it from the hitch. With the squeegee head removed, take a moment to inspect the squeegee blades for wear. The inside edges of the squeegee blade should be sharp. If the inside edges are worn or rounded, it will have an impact on the effectiveness of the vacuum. Now is also a good time to rinse the underside of the squeegee head to remove buildup dirt and debris. Next, remove the spreader pad from the AutoVac hitch by pulling firmly on the pad frame arms until they detach from the hitch. Now, use a hose to rinse and wring out accumulated soil from the pad. Then, set the clean pad aside to dry. The spreader pad frame and squeegee head can be placed on the system's push handle for storage when the system is not in use. Finally, plug the battery into the charger. Kyvac recommends that you charge the battery anytime the system is not in use. This will ensure that the system is ready to use whenever you need it. In the next video module, we'll cover the process of charging the battery in detail.